organic nutrients versus synthetic nutrients. Which should you be using in your grow? That's the topic of today's video. But before we get into it, this video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want bigger roots for better fruits, you got to check out Real Growers Recharge over at realgrowers.com. All right, organics versus synthetics. This one is uh, is controversial. You ready to get into it, High C? Yeah, so before we even do, uh-huh. it seems like people get dogmatic, almost religious. It is over- a religion, yeah. Okay. It's nature versus chemicals, man. It's nature versus tech. Nature versus man-made. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. exactly. It's the better living through chemistry bunch that's going to live forever versus the organic folks that are going to live to be 100. Okay, so let's let's jump into it and let's go through the pros and cons of each one. And let's start with organic. What are some of the pros of growing with organic nutrients? Organic nutrients are safe. It's how nature intended to grow. They're slow release. They're meant to slowly break down through microbial activity as the plant needs it. Okay, and you mentioned microbial activity. Sure. This also aids in like soil health, soil structure. Can sure. you explain that a little bit? Yeah, there's bacteria and fungi. The bacteria are sticky, so they're going to help with soil structure, help those particles stick together. And then fungi go and they search. They've got these hyphae where they go and they grow and they're searching for food. They're searching for uh, the food that those bacteria make. And that fungal structure is, you know, think of it as a, a root mass, you know, a fungal mycorrhizae roots. It's this root system and that's going to hold the plant together like a netting. Mm, okay. I'm sorry, not the plant, the soil together like a netting. Gotcha. And so if I'm growing in like charged soil mm-hmm. with all organic ingredients, this is kind of like a natural ecosystem that develops in my media. Yeah, what we're trying to do is put everything that the plant's going to need, all the raw inputs in there. And the plant has to break these down or the microbes have to break these down in order to feed it to the plant. So uh, it's happening as an ecosystem. The microbes get a signal from the plant or with sugars. The plant can make sugars. It's sends it down to the microbes. <clears throat> then the microbes use those sugars as energy to go out and mine nutrients for the plant. And it's a symbiosis. They keep each other going. And if I'm just growing in like an inert media, like sure. cocoa with purely synthetic mm-hmm. nutrients, I don't get that naturally occurring kind of ecosystem going on. Correct. They ha- they're already broken down. They're not looking for the microbes to break them down. Mm. So they're just ready to go right into the plant. What I'm looking for in my microbes there is to slow them down, to be a little bit of buffer, to line the, the roots with uh, fungi that is able to handle that, uh, uh, that additional chemical fertilizer. Okay, so back to organics. What are some of the cons of growing with organics? Uh, again, slow release. So if you put something in there that's not right, that's disturbing the balance, you're kind of married to it. Mm. Yeah. So I add something in and it's kind of stuck there. I can't just flush it out or uh, yeah. make a quick fix to it. It's just kind of, I got to wait. Exactly right. Yeah. So if you don't know what you're doing, I think you really can screw up organics. Mm. And you mentioned last week's video, you talked about you want your plants going strong. You want to start strong and keep them going strong. Mm-hmm. You got a limited time. If I mix, if I mess something up growing organic, I kind of have like a bigger window of mess ups than if I would uh, synthetic. Yeah, synthetics you can. They're salt based and you can just wash them right out of the soil. Just like when you go to the beach, you can wash salt right off your, you go to the showers, you wash the salt right off. It is very easy for that uh, uh, salt based nutrient, synthetic nutrient to wash right out of the soil. So correcting problems is easier with synthetics, not so easy with, uh, with organics. Also, it sounds like organics probably requires a little bit more skill. It seems a little bit more involved than synthetic nutrients. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. Unless you find somebody like uh, Chris Trump or uh, Potent Ponic Steve, you follow a recipe. If you can follow a recipe, you can usually hit the ground running. But yeah, I think it would take, uh, you really have to understand a lot of the organic components. Uh, with bottled nutrients, you can kind of, or, or even with grow dots, you sprinkle some on. You really don't have to understand too much of what's going on. You use the recharge as an activator, and it's basically microbes, and it's very simple. 
Okay, so let's switch gears and let's talk about the pros of synthetics. You already mentioned it's a lot easier to use. You also kind of touched on the plant availability. What's the difference with synthetic nutrients? You can have a quick fix. If you see something like I went into my grow a couple days ago and I saw a magnesium deficiency just starting. So I went and grabbed some Epsom salts, which I guess in theory would be synthetic, and I watered them in, and within a day I saw results. If I were to have that in uh, super soil or some kind of organic soil, uh, it might take me a while. You know, if, I, if I'm top dressing, then it might take a while for the microbes to process that and for it to get into the plant. And that's, that's because synthetics are already broken down, are already plant available. Yeah. They can go straight into your plant. Exactly. Versus organic nutrients. They the have microbes be, are doing that work. They have to be broken down before they can even be made available for the plant. Yeah, so there's a bit of a delayed reaction. All right, what about proportions? Because when I'm buying nutrients, I see those numbers on the sure. package, and it looks like somebody's already done the hard work of figuring out which proportions of each nutrient my plant needs. Yeah, well, don't forget with synthetics, yeah, because it's important. With organics, the microbes are going to do a lot, of, a lot of that work for you. So you stockpile those nutrients in, and the microbes can take what they need. Mm. Uh, we're bypassing that with synthetics, and we're saying, all right, man, we've got a 13, 5, 11 here. Uh, and by the way, those are, that's the numbers are proportionately the amount of nutrient in there per pound. So a 13, 5, 11 has a lot more nutrient in it than a 2, 2, 2 organic. Mm. It's just more concentrated, which I guess is good and bad. Okay. So it kind of sounds like for, from all the stuff that you're talking about, um, if you're using synthetics, one of the big advantages is that you're basically growing with like a supercharger engine attached versus just a regular old gasoline burning engine. Yeah. You know what? I know somebody that uh, my buddy Hot Rod knows about hot rods. And guess what you can do with the supercharged engine? Burn a hole right in the piston, man. You throw some nitrogen in there. My point is it's a little bit more dangerous. You're living a lot closer to that edge. Mm. So that's one of the cons of synthetics is it's a lot easier to burn your plants. Yeah, but you get to drive it around in a dragster. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, one of the other things you mentioned growing with synthetics, you were telling me about in Florida, they've got a problem with red tide. What's what's that all it about? It is true. Just with synthetics in general, even if it's just in your grow, there's no bond to holding them to the soil. These organics, you've got this whole fungal and bacterial structure that are holding on to that nutrient. Uh, with synthetics, you don't have that. So very easily being able to wash wash them out or they're very easily washed out which is good if you have too much synthetics in your grow you can just pour a whole bunch of water on there and wash them out and by the way you can measure the runoff you'll see the runoff is hundreds of parts per million you're pulling a lot out of that uh yeah, and when that's in nature or wherever that goes, even when that goes down your drain, a lot of times it be, it's either a problem for the water system or it's a problem for the environment. Uh, yeah, phosphorus, and if you've ever seen a red tide in the oceans, that's just phosphorus from, in Florida, we've got sugar cane and all this industry there, and it's dirty. So this might be more of an ethical issue, uh, what I will say is that uh, organics can be impure as well. There's a ton of contaminated organics. There's a ton of heavy metals, or there certainly can be. So it's really important uh, where you source your organic components from. So, you know, they both have their pros and cons. I'm also thinking if I'm paying a bunch of money for my nutrients and then they're just flushing out, how much money am I just flushing down the drain as well? Yeah, you are. But if you're driving a dragster and you want dragster performance, you're going to have to deal with a little bit of inefficiency or a lot of inefficiency. Okay, so you've mentioned microbes in the soil mm -hmm. naturally occurring inside of organic, not just completely absent when you're growing all synthetic. There's no way you can have microbes completely absent. You know, they, they, okay. nature fills a vacuum. 
but by loading uh, with uh, organics, you are just having a complete ecosystem. It is designed for microbes to thrive and be part of that community. When you're using synthetics, you're asking the microbes to do some work. I'm putting my recharge on once a week and I'm going, hey man, uh, do some work here. Bacteria, go and capture some of that nutrient. Let that salt-based nutrient stick to you. Uh, mycorrhizae, go, go touch that root and start growing on there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to reintroduce it every week because it's not in that ideal environment. I'm sending my soldiers in. Man. Okay. So recharge in organic helps break down those nutrients and get them into the plant. Yep. yep. Recharge in synthetic helps slow down the breakdown process and make sure that they only get the nutrients when they need them so both ways using recharge is kind of a plus absolutely in synthetics the recharge i like to say just oversimplification makes the soil sticky so now as those salt-based nutrients are going they hit that organic material it's no longer like washing the, the salt off on the beach there's something for it to stick to so this it helps solve the runoff issue if i'm growing in cocoa with synthetic nutrients helps solve me flushing my money down the drain it seems yeah. like all around either way it's, either way i'm growing having some some uh, organic recharge in the mix is going to be beneficial absolutely and recharge isn't just microbes it also has humic fulvic amino acids which are chelators and those chelators they're organic chelators but they work to get they lower the pressure they lower the amount of energy it takes to get those nutrients into the plant whether it's organics or synthetic so that's a big deal Okay, and you've said synganic, which is kind of like a mix between the sure. two. Sure, that's what I'm saying. If I'm going to use my salts because I want to know exactly what's going in there and have a bunch of control, but I also I don't want bare wire on those roots. I want some kind of protective, you know, protective action on those roots. Well, I'm going to load them up with microbes. I'm going to load the uh, the soil up with bacteria so that those salts uh, don't just leach out; that stick to the the bacteria mm -hmm. in the root zone. So, yeah, that kind of thing. So using a uh, synthetic fertilizer like grow dots but also using an organic soil supplement like recharge of course man the proof's in the pudding there google it man you'll see the results it works but that's me what about you organic synthetic what's your preference and do you use soil microbes in your grow if so i'd love to know how let me know in the comments and if you like this video please smash that like button hit that subscribe button and check out the other couple videos youtube's recommended for you i hope you like them